What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. In today's lesson, we're going to learn 10 advanced phrasal verbs. So far, I've made two videos on advanced vocabulary this academic course. One was on advanced adjectives and another one on C1 and C2 verbs. If you haven't seen them yet, you can find all the links in the description down below. I reckon today's lesson can stand you in good stead when preparing your CAE and proficiency exams. Because when taking these exams, you're supposed to use advanced vocabulary. So grab your vocabulary notebook and a pen and let's get going. For today's lesson, I selected four C1 and six C2 phrasal verbs. Their level is determined by the Cambridge Dictionary. And now let's get started. So the first C1 phrasal verb on my list today is to brush up on something. It means to improve and practice a skill, especially when you haven't used it for a long time. So basically, you refresh your knowledge. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, I like to brush up on my tennis skills. And this phrasal verb is used a lot to talk about languages. So for example, if you want to brush up on your English, check out English bits. And now let's on to the second phrasal verb, to get at something. It means to express something in a way that is not clear or direct, and it's difficult for other people to understand. It can be a synonym of to mean something. And now, two examples. The first one, I don't know what he's getting at. It means I don't know what he's trying to express or what he means. Or we can ask, what are you getting at? instead of asking, what do you mean? And here I've got a bonus example. Bear with me, I will try to explain what I'm getting at. Here we've got a very useful expression, bear with me, which means be patient with me. Number three, to kick someone out. It means to force someone to leave a place and to make someone go away. The first example, the Spanish singer Melendi got drunk, made a fuss, and as a result was kicked out of the plane. And one more example here, I'm sure sooner or later Ukrainians will manage to kick out the occupants. Number four, to look up. Apart from meaning to raise your eyes, it also means to become better and to improve especially when we talk about someone's situation or a business. And now let's look at two examples. The first example, I really hope things will start to look up soon in Ukraine. And one more example here. Thankfully, the coronavirus situation is looking up. From now on, we don't have to wear a mask indoors, which makes me very happy. And guys, before we continue, just a super quick reminder. If you like today's lesson, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to English Bits if you like my channel. Thank you. And now we're going to learn six C2 phrasal verbs. Number five, to fend for yourself. It means to take care of yourself without any help from other people. You don't depend on others. You are independent. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, I'm used to fending for myself. And one more example here, moving abroad makes you learn to fend for yourself. Number six, the phrasal verb to flick through something. It means to look at the pages of a book, a magazine, a newspaper, a photo album, a website, without reading everything. So you do it very quickly. 
And we can also use this phrasal verb to talk about TV channels when you change from one channel to another very quickly. And now a few examples. The first one, imagine you have to talk about two pictures in the exam and you can say, she seems to be at the airport flicking through a magazine. Or we could say, he might be flicking through the channels. Number seven, to own up. It means to admit you've done something wrong and to confess to something. The first example, you might know what I'm getting at in this example. Everybody knows they are guilty, but they refuse to own up. And one more example, he owned up to spying his boss. If you want to use a verb after to own up, you have to use ing, gerund. So it's not to spy, but spying. Number eight, to tear something down. It means to demolish something, especially a building. Remember that it's an irregular verb, to tear, tore, torn. The first one, the old building is being turned down. And one more example, they're going to tear down the old stadium and build a new parking lot in its place. Two more to go, number nine, to shake something off. It means to get rid of an illness or a temporary injury or a negative feeling. And now a few examples. The first one, I hope I will shake off this cold soon. The second example, I managed to shake this virus off. And Taylor Swift has a super catchy song, Shake It Off. And she sings, I'm just gonna shake, I shake it off, I shake it off. And the last phrasal verb for today, to track someone or something down. It means to find someone or something after searching in several places or for a long time. And now two examples. The first one, she managed to track down her old school friend thanks to social media. And the last example, my package got lost. I hope they will track it down. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for having watched this lesson up to the very end. This is the fifth edition with advanced phrase verbs. If you want to learn more, make sure you check out my previous editions. You can find all the links down below. And of course, if you learned something new and useful today, please don't forget to give this lesson a huge thumbs up, subscribe to English Bits, and remember that you can catch me on Instagram where I teach English every day. Thank you for watching today's lesson and see you next Wednesday with a shirt and then next Sunday as usual. Have a lovely day. Ciao for now.